Hello and welcome to more Nerdy Rodent Geekery Chrono Edit. Does it let you edit time as the name suggests? Well, sort of. Their TLDR explains things more clearly, but even better. They have some pictures here to show us all sorts of examples of the things it can do. So let's take a look at it in action. You can use this at home on your own computer using Comfy UI. And those familiar with the channel will know that I like to follow the way of the nerd and use the rodent method for workflows. This means putting things neatly into colourful little boxes, which I think makes things easier to follow and also easier to update as well. If you're looking to make this modified version of the base workflow you can get there in the standard templates, then don't forget you can pause this video, take screenshots and all that sort of stuff as you go along. Also, if you find these videos helpful or perhaps you just like all the work done for you already, then you can support the channel via Patreon. The link is down in the video description. Your support helps me make even more workflows for you and to share these videos with everyone. The freedom to choose is of course yours and a massive thank you to all supporters because you make this possible. On to the workflow details then, and to start with, we've got this nice loader here. I'm using the FP16 model, as you can see there, Chrono Edit FP16, but there are various other versions available as well. As it's using native Comfy UI nodes, then the memory management all happens behind the scenes, unlike with that block swap node you might have seen in my earlier Kijai sampler workflows. If you do use a GGUF instead, and here we can see there are all sorts of different sizes going down in quality there, all the way down to that 6 gig Q2 version, then what you should do instead is use this UNet loader. And of course, you can just attach that one in and there it goes. For most of these examples, I'm going to be using the Distill LoRa because it makes things faster, thanks to the power of CFG1 and fewer steps. If you're not using the LoRa, then you will need to change a few things like that shift value there, and we'll take a look at that in just a moment. Down here is where you give it the image you want it to edit, which gets resized to start with because they say that's a good idea. But of course, for the generations, you can pick a different size like the one I've got there, 1344 by 768. Next up is prompting. And because this model is a bit better when you give it a long AI generated prompt, that's why I've got this little option group here for enabling or disabling that. With regards to prompting, let's just take a quick look at some examples on their project page. So here we can hover over things like generate a Japanese black and white style anime battle scene. So that does that, or you can remove the glasses, or you can turn the person around, convert things into pixel art style, do some very important changes like changing the food into a carrot, or even mixing paints together. Lower down, they do have some other examples, but well, I think this is more for their GitHub as opposed to the Comfy UI image edit workflow, because I tried attaching a video node to it and they didn't really come out quite as well as any of these. Anyway, here's the AI section to turn those simple prompts into something the model prefers a bit. And I'm running Olama locally. These are the Olama nodes. And of course, you will have to have Olama installed before you can run this. There's plenty of models to choose from. You can, of course, use any vision capable model just so it can look at the image. But for these examples here, I'm using Quen 3 VL8B. This rather long and complicated system prompt, you can just pause the screen now and get ready to copy it down. Yeah, no, oh, okay, all right. The other thing you can do is just go and have a look at their code because it's the one copied straight out of their scripts. You don't have to use the AI to enhance your prompts, but I'd suggest doing what they do and always start with the user wants to if you are typing them in manually. Next up is where I have the switches and prompt encoding. So there, a switch just to pick the prompt that I've chosen and then encode it using the clip text encode. Finally, the K sampler group, and this is where everything gets fed in your image, the generation parameters. And yes, it uses WAN image to video here, which is quite fun. As you can see, the length is set to five. So it's actually making five images, although all we want is the very last frame. 
In this settings box, you'll see the notes for what you should change if you are or are not using that LoRa. And of course, the generations will take a bit longer if you're not. Expect upwards of 30 seconds with the high CFG value, depending on your hardware and chosen resolution, of course. I also tried a bunch of different samplers and the note there shows the ones which I thought were okay, though your mileage may vary. Finally, of course, is the VAE decode, and here we have the resulting image of turning that alien to the side view. Pretty decent, I think. Of course, there are various small changes, as you'll always get from the VAE encode decode process. Plus, who knows what this guy's side profile actually looks like, given that he is an alien. OK, let's try a new prompt and image. This time we've got a woman here and we're going to make her play the guitar just like in their example. And just for giggles this time as well, let's use that GGUF file seeing as it's only Q4 and it'll be interesting to see how well it does. Here we have the result and, well, I think that is absolutely fine. So yes, the Q4 works nicely. Being Chrono Edit, its main strength mostly appears to be with movements, and I'll show you where it doesn't work quite so well later on. But for now, let's start with what it's good at and see if we can move this guy's arms down. And the answer is yes, we can. So that's quite good at pose editing. Zooming out or in a bit is also sort of OK. So let's see if we can add a body to this face by making her stand up. And the answer is, yes, we can. It's added some interesting looking water effects there. It's sort of inferred what the background is going to be. But yes, it's given her a body and she is standing up. Some lighting changes this time. So we've got our new image and the prompt is turn the lamp off so the room goes dark. The result this time is certainly interesting. It's made the room go dark and I suppose it has kind of turned the lamp off by completely removing it, even though we've sort of still got the light coming out of it there. So yeah, I mean, it's okay. How about this one then? Expert artists such as the chap who drew this may also want to have some fun as well. So we can copy their example once again by turning this into a black and white illustration. This is the result I got then. I don't think it's quite as cool as theirs, but it's certainly a black and white illustration and it does kind of follow the sketch. Hair removal is always fun too, so we can try it on this painting. And this time, of course, I've disabled the AI prompt option. So I've said the user wants to remove the hair from the woman, giving her a clean, bald head. And as you can see, even without the AI enhancing the prompt, we have indeed removed the hair. It's also removed the other thing that she was holding in her hand as well, but never mind. Some people like to hold on to kittens, but this is where I also did another test by removing that clip vision connection. Taking a look at the standard one to start with then, so we've got the clip vision there and it is connected in this case. And there we go. We've got the woman holding the kitten. Pretty decent. Now, the fun thing is, of course, that that boat has gone across as well. So it's kind of said, oh, yes, obviously that boat is moving, so it's going to keep moving. And then with this other version down here, I basically just disconnected that so the clip vision output isn't connected. And the result is still very similar. The boat there turning instead. Does it work all the time? No, it doesn't. Here I've got an image meeting at the crossroads. So I've got a couple of plastic people there. And the prompt I've got this time is convert this scene with two people into an 8-bit pixel art style digital illustration. So they did that one with the skiing, so it should work. However, the result is like this. So it's changed the colors a little bit, but that definitely isn't pixel art style, is it? Was it that the AI text generation went wrong? Well, let's have a look at the text it generated. The user wants to convert the scene into an 8-bit pixel art style while preserving the core visual elements. It could be that bit. Preserving the core visual elements, maybe, who knows. But then it does go on to say, you know, it's a low resolution shape and it should have all sorts of pixels and things. So yeah, why did it fail? Who knows? But if you do like getting all nerdy with workflow details and stuff, then don't forget to like and subscribe for even more. Ooh, nerdy rodent. He really makes my day. Showing us AI in a really British way.